So here we have a, an engine um, connected to the connected to the aircraft, and the engine uh, produces thrust. So air is coming in. This is a bypass engine. So air comes in, and some of it goes through the fan, and on on out. And then some of it will go through the engine core. So it'll come through and it'll go through the fan and then through the compressors, through the combustion can and out. So this will be my uh, VJ hot. And the bypass air will produce our VJ cold. So the amount of thrust that is produced will be the difference in velocity from the aircraft to the jet velocity for the cold stream and the aircraft velocity to the jet velocity in the hot stream. Uh, it's also dependent on the mass flow of air. So assume we have, say, uh, 900 um, kilograms of air per second coming in and let's just assume that the bypass ratio is eight well if we have 900 kgs per second coming in and the bypass ratio is eight that means you know 800 kilograms are going to go through the fan and then 100 is going to go through the core so if you if you just look at that expression here so b is 8 so 8 over 9 so if there's 900 divided by 9 multiplied by 8 gives me 800 so that's um that's the mass flow of air now <clears throat> on a warm day the mass flow of air it, um is dependent upon the density the cross-sectional area of the intake and the velocity of the aircraft. But on a warm day, this this density figure here, density uh, is equal to the pressure over uh, universal gas constant times T. So if if T is increasing, if we, if we have a high temperature, then we're going to get a low density. And if we get a low density, we get a low mass flow. And if we get a low mass flow, then that, that's smaller and that's smaller, so we get reduced thrust. So on uh, really warm days, this can be an issue. Now, we saw on, on previous videos that the engines are generally flat rated. Okay? So the, the engine ma manufacturer guarantees a certain amount of thrust up to a particular temperature, let's say 30 degrees. Um, when it goes beyond the 30 degrees the temperature drops off so that's that's what i mean by a, a hot day so we're, we're talking somewhere out here you know maybe 35 40 degrees celsius so when that happens um how can we restore thrust well one way to do it is to to use this water injection and with a water injection system you have a tank of cold water uh, on the aircraft and we have a nozzle that sprays the cold water into the engine um, intake now it could be into the intake or maybe into the compressor but i'm showing it here into the uh, intake so when that cold water comes in it's going to reduce the temperature and by reducing the temperature that's going to uh, restore some of the mass flow but coming into the engine now is the mass of the air mass of the air and we also have the mass of the water so our mass has been replaced by an increased mass due to the reduction in temperature and the mass of the water so both of these help restore the the thrust level of the engine so if we look at that on on the graph you can see that the 
engine was flat rated to, you know, I don't know, let's say that's 80 kilonewtons, right? So we were guaranteed 100% of that thrust up to 30 degrees Celsius. But when the temperature got warmer, say up here to 40 degrees Celsius, we were only going to get maybe 80% of that thrust. Okay, that's without water injection. However, if we put in water injection, you know, we, we've cooled the water and, and we've added the mass of the water to the engine, then we will get our rated thrust back out again. So that's what water injection does. It helps restore thrust at, um, at higher temperatures. Now, it will never go above whatever the, the rated value is. It'll never produce more than that. It just helps restore the thrust. And that's the principle of water injection.